Hey, 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 what's going on, Instagram? How are you guys? I'm going to give Instagram a moment to go on out there and uh, let the world know that I am here on Instagram. How's, uh, what is today? I guess it's, um, it is actually what, Thursday. Hey, running revs. Hey, Miriam. One quick second. I'll let you in in a moment. Hey, everybody. So listen up. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me on this Thursday. Thank you so much. So as you guys are coming in the room, as you are coming in the room, please make sure you let me know where you are listening in today. Where are you listening in today to this Instagram live? I want to know. All right. I need you guys to help me out because the more you let me know where you are chiming in from, the more you participate in this conversation with me, the more you give me some thumbs up, the more you give me some hearts. Guess what? Instagram loves it and they just boost this conversation so that more people can hear this conversation. And we want everybody, hey, Alpha Business, how you guys doing? Alpha Business Services, running back, re running revs, 87. So you're in Burbank. So you're here in California. What's up? What's up? Regina from the cities, listening from city of LA, city of the angels. Hey, hey, Shanta Johnson, what's going on? So listen, guys, thank you so much for letting me know where you are chiming in from. Um, I have a guest that's going to be joining me momentarily, and we're going to have this rich conversation about using strategies and analytics to improve the likelihood of qualifying our clients. We're going to talk about some of the obstacles that we encounter in business as business owners, business owners in this industry called tax accounting finance, the finance world. Hey, Lynetta Johnson, hopefully I said that correct. How you doing? Let me know. Um, running red. So this must be, um, this must be um, Mark. Is this Mark? Am I saying it right? Did I get it right? Running Rebs 87. It's got to be Mark. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not, then I guess I stand to be corrected. Columbus, Georgia is in the house. We got the City of Angels in the house. We got Burbank in the house. Burbank, so I'm going to say it's got to be Mark. Yes. Okay. How you doing, Mark? <laughs> Good to know that you are on here. Um, but listen, guys, we are talking about putting some strategies in place. We're talking about using these strategies to really help our clients out. So my guest, Miriam, will be joining me momentarily. But as she prepares to join me, guys, hopefully we are into uh, what the second, the third week of tax season where we have officially started. Hopefully you guys are gathering your documents. I see that I have a few people on here from the state of California. Just a quick reminder. Because some of my clients dropped their stuff off early, but I knew not to file their taxes. I'm going to tell you why I knew. Because the state of California is issuing a Form 1099 for those that receive the middle class um, stipend. That $700 that some of you may have received. Um, you have to report that as taxable income with the Franchise Tax Board. So just know that that is taxable income. They have sent out a 1099 to any and every uh, taxpayer in the state of California, gotcha, uh, Miriam, in the state of California to report that additional $700. It is taxable income. All right, so I am going to be bringing my really introduce myself to you guys. I am Dr. Cosette M. White, America's number one on tax and accounting strategist. I work, you guys, with our tax professionals, our enrolled agents, our CPAs, to help them grow, scale, and leverage in their organization. It is nothing like growing a business and not having the support, growing a business and being stuck, being stuck so Yes, that's a series that's popping in, but I wasn't even talking series and you just hopped in and interrupted what I was saying. <laughs> but listen, guys, I help our tax professionals, our e enrolled agents and um, uh, 
CPAs, helping them grow, scale, and leverage. It's nothing like being stuck, not moving to that next level. Either you're stuck because you don't have the proper systems in place. You don't have um, automation in place. You don't have the proper marketing in place. If your marketing is off, then you are not being found. If you're not being found, then guess what? You are not converting new clients. If you're not converting new clients, then guess what? Your revenue is low. All right. So I work with our clients to help them on those types of things, looking at their pricing, looking at the part, the uh, profit margins to see if they are in alignment with what their goals are. OK, <laughs> yes. Siri's jumped in. Siri's always minding everybody's business. Siri, Siri, Siri was all up in my tea. business. So, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Miriam, go ahead. I am so thankful to have you here with me today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know we are in the busiest of busiest because individuals, business owners, individuals, first of all, they've gotten those W-2s, a lot of them, those 1099s are hitting and they're starting to make the appointments. But we decided to take about 30 minutes out of our busy day, you all. Yes, we're still in the office working on your taxes in case you're wondering, like, how could they stop and have a conversation on taxes? Listen, we're still working. This is part of our day-to-day -day marketing, our self-care, to just stop for a moment and do what we do, and that's have fun and have some conversations. So, Miriam, tell the folks what it is that you do. We know, but tell the folks what it is you do. All Who right. do you serve? Right. Where exactly hey, guys. Are you? I'm Miriam. Um, I have a virtual tax preparation company, and we serve everyone, children, adults, businesses, organizations, you name it. And our goal here at Taxes by M is to educate, is to prepare, and to plan your taxes. Um, and so we are located remotely. Um, anywhere you need us, we're there because we are virtual. Um, I don't usually disclose my actual location, but anywhere you need us, we serve 49 states, and we're here to serve you. Um, you can get us anytime. You can book an appointment. We're, we're one phone call away we're ready to uh, assist you in any way that you need. Um, and so we do all the things for the most part, um, but mainly taxes um, and not accounting. A lot of people kind of mix those two things up, um, but we kind of stay focused on the tax aspect and try and guide you through those other things. All right, so I have a couple of questions for yes. you because I just, I'm a good listener. Everybody tells me I'm a great listener. So yes. I heard you say that you are virtual and you offer yes. um, services in other states. I also heard you say that you everyone. serve everyone. So I got to stop you right there. So you serve everyone. Not everybody, everybody is your client. client. So we kind of, we, we have okay, a vetting so process. I need to be. <laughs> We have, we have a vetting process. Okay. Um, and so, you know, the process is, you know, you book an appointment. We kind of guide you through, um, you know, what's, what's going on, figure out what your needs are and see if we're best able to serve you. Um, and then we'll, we'll decide whether we can take you on as a client or not. Um, maybe your needs can't all be met here, and that's fine. Um, we'll try and recommend you to someone or, you know, some other service. Um, but for the most part, yeah, we, we're, we're, we try to be open to everyone. For the most part, yeah. All right. So I'm going to um, peel the onion on that because when we serve everyone, that means we're serving any and everybody. And typically what I hear and what I see in our industry, when I hear the complaints from our tax professionals, that's because mm -hmm. they're serving everyone. When we decide that we want a category of one mm -hmm. or we want to niche down, then we eliminate some of the headaches that we sometimes encounter. That's mm -hmm. me, when, and I know you've yeah. heard it, niche down, niche down, category of one. But if you serve everybody, that means you're serving the nonprofit. That means you're serving the needy. That means you're serving the greedy. That means you're serving those that you don't care to serve, but you are serving them out of a need for either revenue. So if this is not you, then just correct me. But when I hear people say I serve everybody, then that means that that they have not niched down and identified and became, become the subject expert in a particular area. Is that you? Oh my gosh, so are we having a bad connection? No, that I can was, hear that you. Was, was that mine or yours? Go ahead. Uh, 
Oh, okay. So did not, you hear, hear it, everything that I said? I didn't get any of it, but run it back for me. Okay, so let me just kind of re recap what I was saying. When we say that we serve everybody, that means we're serving any and everybody. That means we're serving the low income. That means we're serving the nonprofits. That means we're serving the children, as you said. And that means that we are not technically a subject matter expert in one particular area if we have not peeled the onion back to decide who is it that I truly want to serve. Typically in our industry, when I hear, when I hear from our colleagues that they are constantly unhappy with their clients, it's because they're not working with clients that make them feel happy. Remember, when we set boundaries, we set those boundaries because we want to work with who we choose to work with. So if I'm hearing you right, maybe you choose to work with everyone and maybe you don't right. have those problems yeah. like most so of our I colleagues don't really do. have many issues because we have that vetting process um, initially where we're discussing what your needs are and seeing if we're the right place for to fulfill those needs. And if not, again, you know, it's, it's not, it's not personal, it's, it's business and we want to have the best experience. And if that is not with us, then by all means, we recommend that you find somewhere that is best for you. Um, but usually we're able to kind of figure that out off of the first interaction, you know, um, when people are honest about their, their actual tax situation, then we're able to really, you know, dive into that. Um, but for the most part, I, I can honestly say that most individuals that inquire with us, okay. we, we usually have a great process and a great relationship with our clients. Um, and it, it is really beautiful, honestly. I don't have too many issues with my clients. Um, just, you know, guiding them uh, on what you know, they didn't know, educating them and helping them to be in the best tax situation because there's always a way to be better, right? Mm -hmm. um, we all have care we're trying to go there's, goals we're trying to achieve and there's room for adjustment there's there's room to you know do more do better you know what i'm saying um and just always trying to figure that out for them and helping them to begin to think critically in that way as well right so prior to us yeah. jumping on today yes. we had a brief conversation and we were talking about the education and, and educating our clients um in mm -hmm. what we call financial literacy and how they need to we need to help them overcome some of the lack mm -hmm. of education regarding the taxes and you touch bases on it just briefly but what are some of the things that you do for your clients to ensure that they are educated to ensure that you don't have some of the problems that some of the professionals experience in their office so, what are some um, of the i'll say this do? uh as far as my clients go, there is uh, a majority of them who have been doing, let's say, their taxes for 10 plus years. So let's say between 30s and 50s are, are the age range of my clients. And many of the issues seem to be technological issues um, and things that are not related to actually doing their taxes. Um, and they're like very uh, basic clerical things like you know, checking your emails um, and having access to your emails and having access to your different tax documents. Um, you know, most employers now and have been doing, this, employers have been doing this for years now where you can access your tax documents through some sort of online portal that they have. They're not actually mailing them out anymore. And so there's a delay in actually getting those documents because many of those individuals don't have the access that they need to those portals because let's say they never, got in there, you know, when they sent out the information about it or whatever the case may be. It's just very, very simple things, but they end up turning out to be big things because let's say they got to reach out to the security department to reset their password and all of these, these drawn out things. And so just ed educating them on, you know, ways to be more prepared, you know, for, for this process, because it is a process. And, you know, a lot of have this this mindset where it's like uh, I just have to avoid it or put it off until you know it's it's going to be a headache I, I, I don't want to deal with it I'm just gonna you know leave it over there for a while and you know we'll kind of wait to deal with that when I have more time but the truth of the matter is, is if you don't make time you don't prepare you're not going to get there or you're going to be scrambling when the time comes and the deadlines are here 
everybody's losing their minds and you know you're losing money too you know missing these lines and you know not getting the extensions that you need you know what i'm saying um so just making sure that that we're on top of those things um and again it goes to the individual everybody has different issues, but many of them seem to be things related to that um then then the education process about their taxes and the different things that they can do and you know strategies to have a better outcome a better refund is usually when that comes into play but a lot of the time is spent on those clerical things so one thing that i teach my clients mm -hmm. to do in situations such as this um how we can educate our clients so that we don't have these bottlenecks and as we are moving to more virtual environment, the landscape is more virtual now. Um, what I teach my clients to do is, one thing is do tutorials, do videos, do instructionals for your clients and send these things out in the month of December and even alert your clients late November, letting them know, dropping a little bit of emails out to them, communicating with them that these are some of the things that you can expect from our office. And if you just do a YouTube video, um, send it out in an email to your clients, or maybe all of your clients don't communicate right. with you by email, then sometimes we do have to pick up the phone. There are devices, there are apps out mm -hmm. there that I teach my clients to use that will send a mass message out to everyone that has, mm -hmm. it could go to their, e their cell phone. And so you can let them know, you can alert them. Miriam, this is Dr. Cosette over at the My Financial Home. Quick update. We have a video coming out. If you have YouTube, make sure you um, check your email. We're going to send you a YouTube link, and it's going to have some instructions on there about what right. do you need to do for the upcoming tax season. So that is one way that we can educate our clients by making it easier for them. And because we have what we call the CRMs now, and everyone's uploading to portals, it's still another opportunity for you to do tutorials, to train them. Because truth be told, you probably know it just like I know, it's when they reach a certain age range, they act like they don't know how to <laughs> that's, use that's, technology. That's what it is. That's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> and so, I mean, even the education can be like, go get your grandson or your granddaughter or ask, you know, someone else in the family to assist you. And it's just that simple, right. but some things we can't change. So if we know that we're dealing with a client where we can't change, we have Absolutely. to have other options. Um, I don't know if you allow your clients to mail their documents in. I heard you say you don't give out your address. So it sounds as if they don't, they can't drop them off, but we can, we allow them to drop them off and or mail them in. And I've mm -hmm. been virtual right. to the world right. since 2006. So, yeah, we, have, we actually have a, location um, where if documents need to be mailed, that's an option. But, you know, this business was started, you know, prior to the, the COVID era where things got hyper virtual, right, for everyone. And it was a really a, a benefit. Actually, um, we, we saw exponential growth in the business when COVID happened because, you know, people weren't doing the in-person thing. And you know, it allowed everyone to kind of get on the same page of, you know, we do need to have these other alternative options to get our things done because we're still held accountable for getting them done, even though we can't. And so, so because of that, um, you know, just learning what the different needs are of my clients. Um, as time changes, we, you know, put out videos last year, you know, discussing the different things that they will need, um, different strategies that they can, you know, do to prepare better and, you know, get ready for all the changes and pay attention to all the changes and, you know, be more, alert. Um, yeah, we do have the text message system, we email, we call, we, we do all the things um, in order to, you know, get the information to them, um, but ultimately it's up to them, you know, mm -hmm. to really um, take it, you know, you could take them to to the water it can't make make them drink right and so so we Correct. do our best with that um i'm right uh -oh. okay right now you're good time where i'm sending it. you're good instagram is 
telling me I reached my, my limit on being on here. <laughs> can you see me? Okay. I, I can see you. Clear. I can't see you. Yes. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, we're sending out a bunch of links for, for different things. Um, uh, just how to access your, your, your emails and things that are not necessarily tax related, but we're, we're doing our best to assist them to get them, you know, where they need to be. And so I appreciate all the things that you're, you're, you're saying to do, and we are doing them and we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep going. All right. Well, that's great. That's great. So we also, um, we, and we probably already touched on this, but you said that your time is yeah. consumed with educating. And so um, I just want to say this, continue to educate because there are a lot of taxpayers out there that have misleading information and some just don't know, and they don't know what they don't know. It's our responsibility to make sure that we empower, inspire, and educate. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about the work that I do. Um, I work with tax professionals. So I've been in the industry for over two decades. So I do feel as though I do have a responsibility to make sure that I reach back and pull the next ones forward and make sure that I train them accordingly. Because as you know, this industry has shifted. It has shifted so much. And so, so many of us are really getting in trouble because we, I'm going to say we have bad leaders and bad decisions that we make. So I try to shift you guys from <laughs> the leaders that are or guiding them, the so-called leaders that may be guiding some of us in this industry. Um, but continue doing what you're doing. If you are educating your clientele, you are doing the right thing. They don't know. They look to us to guide them, to educate, and to get them back the most that they can legally and ethically. So I'm going to say continue with the training um, if that's what you're doing. The one thing that I will stress to you, being that I've been in this industry for a good little while, is, and I'm going to go back to that very first uh, statement you made, which was you serve everyone. As you grow in your business, you will decide and you will get to a point where everyone is not your ideal client. You will get to a point where you may want to specialize in child care. You may want to specialize in truck drivers. You may want to specialize in therapies, therapists whatever it is, so that you are that expert in that industry. Everyone can come to you and say, um, uh, Miriam does therapists. She knows the way that we are to receive our cash receipts. She understands our, our industry, the peaks, the, the, the ebbs and flows, et cetera. So that's what I would stress to you um, as you grow and as you continue to build your empire. It's something to think about as you you know, go throughout this season and more tax seasons Thank to come. You. So, um, where what where can they actually follow you? Where can the viewers oh, follow so you? Those you can that are listening follow us to us at taxes by underscore m on Instagram. Um, we're on Facebook. We're on Google. We're on all the places, the main places where you need us to be. Um, and again, you can get free tips, education, information. We're just trying to help you um, along with this this rigorous process. It's actually a lot easier than than we sometimes make it. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that. And I really appreciate her about because I like I know you you have been doing this thing and that is phenomenal. And like keep keep pouring into us. We need this this. We have to continue to go on, um, especially for us as minorities. You know, I don't know where the information is missed at what point, but we got to get get it to one another, uh, and we have to care about educating. And we we really do because it, we're missing out so much when we don't. You know, um, so the the it's missed it's missed um, way back in grade school. Right. It's missed growing up in our homes. It's missed in our communities. Yes, we do have some leaders that are continuously giving back, but we know that it if it's not taught in the right. it's not taught in the school systems. Um, mm -hmm. Money, finance, anything that has to do credit, anything that has to do with helping us as a person around our finance, our wealth, it's not taught in the schools. And so we have to make sure that we reach out, we reach up, and we learn as much as possible. And we also have to remember to everybody that's on this thread, we need to surround ourselves with individuals that right. are are right. um, like-minded individuals. 
um, or individuals who are 10 steps ahead of us. You know, if we are the smartest one out of the crew, then that does us no well. We need to be hanging with someone that's 10, 20 feet ahead of us because we can learn. It may be very intimidated. Trust me, I've been sitting at the table with people that are smarter than me. Do I feel intimidated? Heck yeah, I feel intimidated sometimes, but you know what? I learn from sitting at the table from people that are smarter than me. So when you said, not sure where the translation, lost in translation, it was never given to us. It was never really presented to us when we were growing up as children. And so we grew up doing what we do best, looking at our parents, our grandparents, our aunts, our uncles. And sometimes that was not the best choice, but that's what yep. we knew because that's who we looked up to. And then sometimes it was our circle, our friends. If our friends made bad money decisions, we just followed what our friends did. Why? Because it was cool. It was a thing to do. We hanging out with our girlfriends. It was a thing to do. So that's where it's really lost. But it's our responsibility right now to reach mm -hmm. back, grab the next one, teach them so that Absolutely. we are building our community. Mm -hmm. It's about leaving a legacy. It's about, and This tax thing is really about educating so that no one owes Uncle Sam any additional money than they need to. And so that no one is going to jail yeah. behind you or nothing <laughs> stupid. Um, listen, y'all, don't get desperate. Don't go to that tax professional that's going to hook you up. And then years, two, three years, IRS come knocking at the door, sending you the letters because you did something different. So it has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure Thank having you. this conversation with you. Guys, you know you can follow me at Cosette and White on all platforms. I'm on, um, I'm on YouTube as Dr. Cosetta White, okay? For my tax professionals, my enrolled agents, my CPAs, if you guys are stuck, if you're tired of doing the same thing over and over and over again and getting those same results, and by the way, Albert Einstein says that's insanity, but if you're tired of being stuck, if you're ready to next level, if you're tired of going through the same tax season and saying, next year, I'm gonna do better, next year, I'm gonna implement some systems, you go through the summer months and you're back to uh, Q4 and nothing has been done and you start the year all over again, your marketing sucks. And I do mean your marketing sucks. I watch some of you in your marketing. Why? If your marketing is not on point, then you will not be found. If you're not being found, then you're not converting clients. And if you're not right. converting clients, then you're not getting paid. So you need to tighten up your marketing. Your marketing starts with your messaging. If your messaging is not speaking to your ideal client, then you're on Facebook, social, uh, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, all the social media plat platforms plan. You need to focus in on your messaging. Your messaging should be just speaking directly to your ideal client. If you're not speaking to your ideal client, then you're not being found, you're not being seen, right. and you're not collecting the bag. Okay, so I welcome all of my tax professionals, enrolled agents, CPAs to join me at Thrive Live. It's here in Los Angeles, California. Ooh. Guys, make it a vacation. It's so much to do here in California. You got Hollywood, you got Beverly Hills, you got Santa Monica, you got Universal, you got Century City, you got, you got Los Angeles, you got California. You have a lot to do. Make it a vacation. It's May 11th through the 13th. If you come in as a VIP, you get the extra um, day, which is day zero, where you can earn up to 12 hours of continuing education okay. that will be reported to the Internal Revenue Service. We are a continuing education provider with the Internal Revenue Service. So those hours on day zero will be reported to the IRS. So y'all can sit and watch on the sideline and then say, I wish I could have, wish I would have been there or you can take the initiative to grow your business. Click on the link above, you guys. Click on the link above, grab a ticket. There's bonuses and incentives in it. So you gotta go, you gotta go look at what's in it. I can't, I only got a few minutes. I can't tell you everything, but go look at what's in it. And um, Miriam, hopefully I'll have an opportunity to see you, meet you, greet you at Thrive Live as well. Okay, you guys, make sure you take a moment right now. Give them your handle so that uh, they can go follow Instagram you right now. Taxes, T A X E S D Y underscore M. You can find us there. All right. You guys got that? She's going to drop it in. She's going to come back up and drop it in the thread here. 
once I post this, you guys, make sure you go follow her, support her. And um, thank you guys so much for joining me on this Thriving Conversations today. All right, you guys have a beautiful one. Take care. Bye-bye.